Greetings YouTube and welcome back to another Minecraft Let's Play with me Vitaly Vapa inside of Lamunda Vapa. Many thanks for coming back and joining me. For those of you who were with me last week you would have seen that we built this uh, huge cow cooker and uh, leather farm so effectively we have quite a bit of leather and cook steak coming out of here. We have these cows up the top that we feed with wheat from down here. Let's see if they're currently hungry so we can show anyone who wasn't with us last week how this works. So I think, no, at this time they're not ready to eat just yet. So oh, let's have a go actually. No, obviously just being fed unfortunately. But effectively you run along there, you feed your wheat to them. And then, as you can see, baby cows drop into the bottom. So you can see we have a mixture in here of baby and adult cows. And when you're ready, you come over to the red button here, click that. And then, as you can see, the adult cows are cooked, but the baby ones are not. Because there's a, a line of signs on the back of these quartz blocks here. And then these cows will die from fire damage anytime. There we go, leaving the baby cows still in there, ready to grow. And then if we come to here, you can see that the cooked, the cooked steak and the leather filters into this chest here. Very cool and just what we need at the moment. But this time we are going to try and walk in for a person. This is where we're going to build a chicken farm next week. But for those of you who have been with us for a while, you will remember that we tried to build an AFK mushroom farm. Now, the design we had worked and we had our little mushroom over here keeping us company. He was here. We had this whole thing built on a hopper clock. But to be honest, guys, it's not been producing enough mushrooms. It's extremely slow. So I've had a little look round on YouTube and I've reverted to a design that I've seen done by both GT Experience and Skippy6 Gaming. I'll put links to both of their designs in the description. So I've taken on board the principles that they've laid down and I'm gonna build a what I'm gonna call a tower mushroom farm and hopefully it will have a slightly production high a uh, slightly higher production rate. So for this build, I'm you're gonna need uh, some blocks of choice, either stone or cobblestone, or you could build it out of dirt. You'll need some signs, you'll need one water bucket, one dispenser, two repeaters, one sticky piston, a daylight sensor. Uh, you'll need either some podzel or mycelium if you want to speed things along, obviously gained using a silk touch tool. You'll need at least one block of glass, you'll need some brown and red mushrooms, the items I'm saying some of, such as the signs, the mushrooms, and the blocks of choice, it depends how tall you're going to build this thing, because in theory, you could build it as tall as you like. You also need two chests, but I've already put those down, and I'm looking like I'm missing a few items. You need four hoppers as well, and you'll need, uh, let's think, you'll need some redstone dust as well, I'm sure. Yes, you need two pieces of redstone dust. So let me just see if I've got any of that stuff kicking about. I have. I've remembered to bring a load of spare things with me because I keep losing items is the problem. There's some hoppers up there. There we go. So one, two, three, four for this design. There we go. So decide where your chest is going to go and place it down. And then let's get rid of that silk touch tool. And then going into the back of that chest, you don't want any of these to be solid blocks. That would be ridiculous. Obviously, hopefully nothing's going to drop in. Run your four hoppers into the back of the farm like so. And then you're going to need to place in some blocks of choice now. Let's think this one through for us here. I'm trying to think how best to do this. Yep, yeah, got it, got it, got it, got it. Let's uh, let's move some lights. Otherwise, you guys are not going to be able to see what we're doing. Let's say so I always do my builds in survival because that's where you're going to be needing them. Let's throw down a block there, and then we don't need this one just yet. 
So fill this little base in here. So you can probably see this is quite a simple design and that is exactly what we thought might happen. That really made me jump. Where is he? Where are you? There we go. Cool. Hopefully that's the worst thing that jumps in. Hmm. Really worried now. We're just going to get a creeper drop down mid video. That's going to be embarrassing if that happens. We'll tough it out. We'll tough it out. This is survival, guys. This is what happens. This is what we do. This is what we do. This, uh, let's continue on. Try not to let ourselves get too rattled. So you've got this 9x9 nine nine space here. And then you have a side that's three blocks wide. And then you have these sides where you have a little one indent of one. So above these hoppers, we need to place in a line of uh, blocks like so. Take out a sign and place a sign down here. Doesn't have to have anything written on it, of course. Take out your mycelium and maybe a normal block of dirt for sacrificial reasons. This will become clear in a second because we need our first block of mycelium right there above the middle hopper. You'll then need to place in a block of mycelium in each of those edges there. And following on from that, you'll need to place in some mushrooms. Now, I alternate these between each level. Red being my favorite though, so we're gonna have that on show like so. Then what we need to do is take out our cobblestone and run that across one, two, three, like so. And then one, two, three. Perfect. Now, obviously, as I say, I'm building in survival, so I need a way to get up and down at the moment. Like so. And effectively, we now just repeat this same pattern the whole way up. Obviously, doing a little bit better where we can. So on this level, place your sign in on the opposite side here. And that zigzags the whole way up. And then again, taking out a sacrificial block, place in your sacrificial block and place your mycelium one over. And then a mycelium block in each corner like so and then with a brown mushroom on top looking good now this front face will be blocked in i haven't quite decided on a design yet so i'm probably going to do a cut ahead for that part of the video but effectively we just keep repeating this design until you get to your desired height so i'm going to cut ahead now and sleep through the night hopefully not get ambushed by too many mobs and i'm probably gonna build this up another two layers so one more red layer and then one more brown and i'll bring you back when i've reached that point as you can see i'm now outside of farm hills working away and i'm got one more layer of this farm to add um i just thought i'd cut back and say when you place in this middle block of mycelium pods or etc Place down a red mushroom or a brown, and then on the three corresponding external mushrooms, place down the opposite color. So, for instance, if I stand here, you can see that one is red in that corner because the one below is brown. So, so I've got one more layer to add. Now, just to show you how I'm doing this because of it being farm hills and I don't want this visible on the outside, as I've moved up a block, I'm actually going to switch my material over to smooth regular stone just so that anything that starts to become visible on the outside camouflages in is is my thinking here so i'm going to be using a mixture of dirt 
and I say smooth stone. Don't want dirt there. Let's just get rid of that one. And let's just say that this all blends into the hillside without be anything being too on show. Perfect. And yeah, so it's all about just continuing on this very basic layout of blocks. I need these leaf blocks to hurry up and disappear. Obviously I had a tree here that was in my way. So unfortunately the tree had to go. There we go, perfect. And then we want mycelium there as well. And then can we place on top of a mushroom? Oh, we can. That makes life a little bit easier. <laughs> I was I was way more excited about that than I should have been, I think. Uh, so, let's see. Red. 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 And then brown. Nice. I think that's probably about as tall as I'm going to go with this design. And don't forget that sign. So on the layer below, it was on that side. So on this one, it needs to be there. Let's grab that. Perfect stuff. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So let me think this one through. So on this top layer, I want to place in my dispenser and clock, as well as fill some stone in around these fellows. So I'll probably go around, tidy up the outside afterwards, like we always do. But effectively, that is that one right there. Actually, on this top layer, I don't think we even need these blocks of stone here, to be honest because we can just cover this whole top layer over and we can do that with dirt here <laughs> this could be interesting because some of that dirt might turn into mycelium but we will wait and see so on this top block here this block here can be taken out and let's think as can this one actually and oh we've got some remnants of the old floor there you can place yourself in a dispenser that you'll want to have it facing towards you good old survival dispensers just do whatever you want the complete opposite to whatever you're being told to do. Let's check, we can just jump over to here. Right, let's get as far back from that puppy as we can, perfect. And then running into that dispenser, we are going to build a very basic uh, clock, a daylight sensor timer basically. So if we come down like so, break that away there. I'm debating whether or not to go up another layer actually, but I'm starting to think that we might be getting too tall if we do that to reasonably cover this over. Let's see how we get on. So, take one of your repeaters and run it straight into the back of your clock like so. Then we can place in some redstone trickery which I think will go this direction for that all of these blocks can be put back afterwards so I'm not too worried that we're taking away quite a bit above re <laughs> reproducing stone is not a big problem for us And running into your... Ah, that's going to be a slight issue there, though, isn't there? Because of that. So what about this block here? Could we 
do much about that. No, but we could run it to there. Sorry guys, bear with me. I'm thinking this through because the difficulty I have is I'm trying to bury this redstone. And in you'll see in the original videos if you watch those in the description that all the redstone is just left on show. And that's fine, apart from when you don't wish to see it. So that means I actually need to be taking out these poor unfortunate blocks instead. Okay. So redstone, after your repeater, then we are going to knock out this block here, place down a sticky piston, that's not a sticky piston, that's a repeater, place down a sticky piston, you can go ahead and place any block you want on top of that, especially for me since it's going to be hidden under two bits of redstone. And then into the back of that, place in a repeater. And then we just need to take out another two blocks, like so. And break this one all the way up to sky. But, ooh, that's a tricky sale right there, isn't it? Let me see. Yeah, it's all about how to neaten this up, I think, is definitely the difficult part. Perfect. Right. I am going to deviate again from the original design, and I'm going to say, I don't want to see Dodder right there. Oh, sorry, Andesite. Let's place in a sensor. Perfect. And, ah, you may have heard there was a little click there, which means it's working. Okay. That's exciting. So we can now start to fill some of this in with a mixture of blocks that you will see and blocks that you won't. So let me work my way out and around this fellow. So we got a little click out of our dispenser there so which means all working perfectly so let's think about this we don't need that one Ooh, that was probably a bit wasteful and then stone and then Stone again, bit of stone there, why not? And then we're just going to fill all this up now so that we don't see it. Perfect. Now, all you need to do is place a water bucket inside your dispenser, and then every single time you get a pulse from your daylight sensor, which we are going to leave hidden there, like so. That will mean every two daylight cycles, the water will shoot out of there and knock off any mushrooms that have grown on these surrounding bits of stone. So all I have to do now is cap the farm off. And that is today's build completed. Again, record time. I definitely think I'm getting quicker with these uh, builds being done live in uh, survival because... I'll be honest, sometimes it's not that easy to do these survival base builds, but yeah, on top of your farm you want to do this. I've just realised when that clock goes off, we haven't filled over the front yet, so we're going to get water go everywhere. So we need to speed up a bit, because that could be a bit of a disaster. Let's just do that, 
and then we're just gonna grab our rest of our stone you guys are lucky you get you get to watch me do some freestyle set dressing there not bad not bad fairly natural looking needs a bit of work between those two but we will do that at a later date let's get back in there as i say oh don't mind if i do I am very cautious because I did see a creeper on top of Farm Hills earlier. Keep saying it, need to put more lights up on the outside to avoid that thing from happening really. Uh, so actually, let's grab some stone and some glass for this design. Quick, quick, quick though. Actually, we've got grey wool down there. Let's just grab a bit more glass anyway. I like glass on the front of these machines because that way not only can you see in and check everything's working but I just think it helps add to the whole mechanical look of the farms. Oh, come on. Okay, nothing out here still. Good, 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 good. Okay. Okay. Don't know if I've ever shown you guys this uh, crazy spiral staircase. This must be making it a bit difficult to watch, but it's a practical way of getting up and down farm hills. Okay. Yeah, see how dark that uh, mushroom farm is on the inside. That's perfect, that. Okay, looking good mushroom farm, looking good. So let's grab ourselves out some grey wool, that would be stone. This one, there we go, say so that's stone I'm going to use off camera just to uh, go around and finish off around the outside and make sure that Everything is uh, all back in ship shape on the outside of our build. So I'm thinking the glass we could have lined up wherever you'll be able to see the mushrooms. Let's think that through. So probably don't need one up there. So glass, glass, two pieces of glass. That's all we're going to need for this build. There we go, there we go. Then one, three, four. And that, hopefully, is going to be a much higher yield farm than our previous one. I'm probably going to build something up around this just to make it look a bit more mechanical. Uh, let me have a little think and I shall cut ahead to the finished result. Let me have a little, little think on how we can make this look more steampunk. Be right back, guys. So here it is guys, here's the final result. I've just gone ahead and framed the machine with some uh, stone half slabs and then using paintings from the uh, 4J Studios Minecraft uh, steampunk texture pack. I've added on some pipes and valves and then I've added these two completely aesthetic and useless levers. These are not an essential part of the uh, build, but I'm really happy with it actually. I think I would love to be able to add another half slab up the top there so I'm going to do that now actually it's just pull my way up there aim for the bottom hop there we go That's exactly what I was after there we go so hopefully this thing's gonna be profitable for us and actually churn out some mushrooms so as always guys many thanks for joining me I'll see you all next week and we will build ourselves a redstone chicken cooker. But until then guys, many thanks. Goodbye.